This is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk to you about using the Linus function for multiple regressions without array functions. Most of the videos that you find on YouTube are using array functions and I find those to be a little bit confusing and not very transparent to others. So we're going to use the index function instead. So let's look at a model and see how to use it. Here's a model that I've set up for this example. Let us assume that we have some data represented by x1 and then a y reality. So this is this data here is our data that we're given. And we've plotted that data over here on this xy graph and we can see that it has some curvature. So we are going to assume that this is a polynomial and let's assume it's an a uh, second degree polynomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little transformation here and calculate x squared. So 0.46 times itself is 0.214 and all the way down. We want to add a trend line to this graph. So I'm going to click the data, uh, add a trend line, and we want to add a polynomial of the second degree. We want to display the function on the chart and the R squared. So there we have our regression. And we can see it fits very well but not perfectly. But unfortunately we can't use these, e these coefficients in an equation. So what we want to do is extract them into something else. So how are we going to do that easily? And we want to be able to do this for any number of variables actually. So this is where we're going to use the line s function. Well we first need to understand the line s function is a little different from normal, normal functions. It doesn't return one value, it returns multiple values. So this line s function with parameters of known y's, known x's, and then a constant in the stats actually is an array and it's represented by this taken from the Microsoft help file. The constant if you have one is over here on the far right that's the B and then the known X's work from right to left so this is the first X the second X the third X. So in our example the far right column is our B our constant the M1 is going to be X and the M2 is going to be X squared. So and then there are other co the other statistics down here. So how are we going to do this? Alright without using the array function. We're going to start by just typing in the line S function. So we'll start by typing in the line S function equals line S parentheses. It wants the known Y's then it wants the known x's. Now in this case we have two x's so I'll highlight both of those. If we had multiple it could be any number. And then it wants the constant so we want true. It's calculated normally. And stats we do want the stats so we'll return to additional statistics. So this returned one value. I'll just for example I'll copy this over one and you'll see that I go it doesn't return anything. So we have to modify this a little bit. So I've set an array here with numbers one to n going down on the side and one to n going out to the uh, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this line s function with an index function. So line s of this variable and then I want the row and the column. And to be able to copy it across I'm going to put a um, dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the C. And now when I copy this down or across, ah, but that I didn't do. I need to set the state to F4, 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 and F4. Okay. 
So then when I copy this across and down, I get the answers that I'm expecting. So let's compare the results. Here this shows 3.2 for my x squared term, a 0.83 and a 0.51 for the constant. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to understand what is my estimate. So here's my estimate for y based on this equation. My estimate is equal to the constant, f4, plus this term times x plus this term times the x squared. We'll just do it this way. I'll go there and then go up. And we'll say enter. And then I often come, oftentimes come back and will um, then put in my F4s once I've got the right references. So I think that looks right. And if then I can copy that down this way. And then I calculate the error as equal to my estimate minus my reality. I can then add my reality or my estimates to my chart over here. So I'll go to design, select data, add new data. This is going to be my estimate. And the x values are still here. And the y values now are my estimates. Okay, we'll make these a little bit smaller. I'm having trouble selecting that, those, the estimates. So I'm going to go to Format, come over here to, I can select the estimate. And then we can change the marker size to a smaller number. So there we have it. We've, we've shown the actuals in the blue and we've shown the estimates in the red. One question that we might want to ask is how good is this forecast? Well what I've done here is I have I based my equation on a constant for 2 times x1 3 times x squared plus I add an error coefficient. And that error coefficient is actually over here, which is, is a normal 0, 1 distribution. So that's how I generated my reality. And my hope would be that the regression that I get would match these original coefficients. The fact is, it does not match it very well. I have an x squared term equal to 3.2 versus 3, uh, x term of 0.83 versus 2, and a constant of 5 versus 4. So we can see that the regression analysis may in fact be very different from what we thought what the reality is if that reality includes some error function. As an addendum, I can show as a test, I can come in here and put a, a normal zero, 0 function, which means no error term. And then you will see that our result is exactly what we would expected with a constant of 4, a x term of 2, and x squared term of 3. Hope you find this video helpful. Thank you.